What's up, everybody? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 15 of Super Switch Heads, the premier Nintendo podcast on all of the internet. My name is David Howe. My name is Matthew Stoner. I am Patrick Nisley. And we have a very special guest on the show today. We have sound designer Eduardo Ortiz Frau, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. How are you, buddy? Hey, I'm good. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. Of course. You've been having a pretty good week. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, I, I might talk about that later. It's All a right, pretty oh crazy yeah. week. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll get into it. We'll yeah. dive head first. Yeah. Uh, we got a great show for you guys today. We're going to be talking with Eduardo towards the end of the episode about sound designing for indie games. Uh, he's got a couple games uh, on the Nintendo eShop right now, Gora Goa and everything. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about that in some upcoming projects. Other than that, we'll be going through some news. We uh, got Nintendo's E3 plans have been announced. Uh, there's a Mario Maker 2 direct Yay. today, if you're listening on Wednesday. Um, that's, uh, just, just our luck that it's coming out on Wednesday. <laughs> they're all, they're uh, doing them all on Wednesday. Always now. fucking does. Uh, we got some loot box bills, uh, up. We got some Pokemon news. Uh, it's, it's a whole thing. We're going to be having a good time. We're also going to be talking about Detective Pikachu. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Pokemon, let's talk about we it. We should start with that. Okay, we let's do it. All right. So, yeah, tell so, us. So uh, Matt and I both went to the same Detective Pikachu screening on Thursday, 6.55. Alamo Mueller. <laughs> on Thursday. Not on Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Not nearly as many kids as I thought were going to be there. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it was mostly our peers. <laughs> but uh, what, so is what's your verdict? Well, first of all, have you seen it, Beth? I have not seen it. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, have you seen it, Eduardo? Uh, I have not. I have okay, not. cool. This is going to be a conversation between yeah, you and me, yeah. buddy. Just us. So, Let's do it. I'll ask it, a question or two. Did this break the video game movie curse? Is this the best video game movie of all time? I wasn't prepared for that question. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think it's for, gotta from, be ex- from a live action perspective. Yeah, like n- taking away all the animated films. Yeah, like the the first Pokemon movie is really good. Sure, um, but this is this is a great movie. Yeah, it's, like super fun. I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> oh, really? That <laughs> yeah. good? I mean, like I understand the bar for best video game movie ever is not it's high, incredibly <laughs> low. But, but, like, like, yeah, but you high. really liked it? Uh, yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, if you're a Pokemon fan, you're gonna like this. movie. What if you're not? Then you like could still like this movie. But I wouldn't Cause like, say you definitely will. Me, like I'm, you know, I never really played much Pokemon. So. Well, do you like just, do you like Agatha Christie novels? Do you like good times? <laughs> <laughs> do you though? Do I like Agatha Christie novels? Yes. <laughs> She's like a mystery person, right? <laughs> yes, it's, like, it's a mystery. It's a mystery I movie. do. I like Hercule Poirot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Poirot is in this movie, played by Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> do you like uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long time since it's <laughs> no, that, That's a good one. That's a yeah, classic. everybody likes yeah. to frame Roger Rabbit. Yeah, it's a great movie. This I, feels very starring sick starring Mario from the Mario movie. <laughs> yeah. um, I, like, is there any other good video game live action movie ever? Pretty I can't, much, I can't no. think of one. It's ever. generally agreed that maybe Mortal Kombat is the first one. Yeah, but that's it, bad. But it's not good. Like, it's just a fun time. Kind yeah, of. sure. I think it's a song. Is what makes it. <laughs> 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 yeah. So not only not only is it the highest uh, rated video game movie on Rotten Tomatoes, it also had the highest opening weekend of any video game movie ever. It dethroned uh, Lara Croft Tomb Raider. I think the Angelina Jolie version of that movie. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it didn't uh, unseat. I guess this is a box office podcast now, but it did not. <laughs> it did not unseat Avengers in its third weekend. Uh, domestically, but it got really fucking close. So it's like, okay. so it's pretty cool. I mean, it was. I, I I thought it was a great movie. We got free Pokemon cards with it, which was very nostalgic. Nice. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty and cool. You yeah. get to there, take a picture. In there's a, a photo op. Uh, yeah, I almost said photo op opportunity. Uh, <laughs> with that's like that's a, what op is yeah, yeah, short for. I, I know, I'm an idiot. Uh, just like a cardboard cutout of a Pokemon card. Yeah, yeah, that I've seen fun. that on my Facebook uh, feed. Yeah, yeah multiple yeah. times. Yeah, we we took a we took a little switch head selfie. It was kind of yeah, nice. it was very cute. Yeah, but um, but uh, yeah, I thought it was great. Yeah, the movie's super fun. It, it it has a lot of respect for the franchise and the characters and the way that the characters might act in this world. And I think it was very true to what I would think a Pokemon movie, it, live action Pokemon movie might be. Yeah, for sure. I was like not as bothered by the 
detective part. Or no, well, well, that didn't really bother me. That was kind of like, well, there's some stuff that is kind of dumb about that. Like they're not very good detectives, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like, but like, uh, but, but like the look of them, right? Like everybody was like, oh man, they look too fuzzy or they're too weird or whatever. And it's like I kind of felt that a little bit in the trailers, but as soon as the movie started, like I didn't care at all about that. Very cute Cubone in that movie, too. Yeah, 10 Cubones out of 10 Cubones. 10 Cubones <laughs> out of 10. That's great. That's a perfect Cubone score. So that's an endorsement from Super Switch Heads. Go check out the movie. All right. You can go. You, you have to stop me, Patrick, from okay. talking too much because I will just go on and on about this movie. Fair enough. <laughs> First uh, news item. <laughs> yes, moving on. Uh, Nintendo announces their E3 Direct yeah. date, June 11th, uh, 11 a.m. Central Time. That's right. Which and is 12 p.m. Eastern Time. And it's something Greenwich Mean Time. Oh yeah, it's like five p.m. But uh, we won't go do that joke again. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that one, I'm already tired of that one. <laughs> they um, they said the the focus of this one is on Switch games for for 2019. So they didn't mention the 3ds. They didn't mention 2020. So uh, there's plenty to talk about, though. There are a lot of games that we haven't seen a lot of details on. Um, and I'm sure we will talk about that more later. Uh, one thing that was sort of a looming question was, I guess, a lot of time is going to be taken up by Mario Maker 2. But no, because yeah, Nintendo just announced there is a Mario Maker 2 Direct happening on May 15th at 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's pretty hype. That would be pretty redundant if they spent a bunch of time in their E3 yeah. Direct talking about Mario Maker Two after they did a fifteen minute yeah. video on it. Well, until they announced they announced the the E three one first, so it was kind of like, huh, I guess that's what's going to happen. But then they just dropped this on us. So if you're listening to this, we, you know, you've probably already listened to the Mario Maker Two Direct, so we won't talk about that too much. We'll <laughs> we'll talk about it next or, or it's about to happen. All right, right. right. If, you're, yeah. if you're very <laughs> timely, it's about to happen. <laughs> But uh, we'll talk about that next week. They said that's going to be a 15-minute presentation, so that should be cool. We'll yeah. learn a lot more about that game. I think the biggest takeaway from that E3 thing is that the E3 Direct is happening on a Tuesday morning, so we will actually get to talk about Yay. it the day that it happens on this podcast. So that's yeah. very exciting. And um, and they also announced exactly the details for like the Splatoon 2 tournament and the Treehouse and when all that's going to be. So I'm sure we'll, we'll hear a lot of cool stuff coming out of the Treehouse, because I bet you there's going to be a lot of gameplay of, in the treehouse of games we haven't seen yeah at all yeah, so that'll yeah. be cool i think i think especially with this big mario maker 2 direct uh, about to happen i think a lot of people were thinking that that was gonna be a huge focus for them at e3 so yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see kind of what their main game on the show floor is yeah this year you guys have any oh, now yeah. that now that we know mario maker there's only one game that matters to all of nintendo fans town, town. town. that's right <laughs> I think it's going to be Animal Crossing, but yeah, I'm. Re- I think, but it's it, be Animal I think it somewhat too. depends on the scheduling, which we don't know. Like, which games are coming out when? If it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, I, I'm, it, we'll surely find out a lot more right. about that soon. But uh, moving on, uh, PlayStation did their sort of Nintendo Direct copycat thing, State of Play on May 9th, and it was like a 12 minute presentation, and um, they closed this time they did it right they closed with a big thing they closed with the final fantasy 7 remake uh and speaking of e3 they said more info to come at june so probably the square (laughs) e3 panel yeah i'd imagine so um so that's cool that looked really great honestly it looked incredible yeah this Uh, is the first time we've seen gameplay of the final fantasy 7 remake yeah. Seemed like it was kind of like action RPG, right? Yeah, it yeah. looks a little like, like Kingdom Heartsy. I wonder yeah, what, yeah. how much they'll change the mechanics of the battles and stuff. We'll see. Well, it looks enti- it does not look turn based at all. Yeah, yeah, it didn't. Yeah. Well, it didn't look turn from the based, trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looked like a uh, Final Fantasy fifteen with a uh, uh, Final Fantasy seven skin. Yeah, some In- of the combat interesting too. I think they pretty much clarified that it is going to be episodic. Like afterwards, still like they're still doing the kind of staggered releases. So I think Boo. this first one is just going to be straight up Midgar. You know what I mean? I bet it's just going to be just the opening bit. You know, because that's all we've seen so far is stuff from Midgar. So I don't the know. only thing I didn't like about that trailer was the voiceover. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know for some reason it stood out to me. It seemed like I don't know. It was like too anime ish. <laughs> we yeah. heard yeah. we heard Barrett and we heard yeah. Eris, right? Yeah. <laughs> there was just like a bunch of random little voices that I, that I, I they stood out to me. Yeah, as an audio whenever whenever Cloud gets handed the flower from Aerith and he's like. A flower? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, no, like, that's it? something that works better in Japanese. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, something I did notice, or something people were talking about, they uh, 
the lip sync is um, English. Is well, it's for the English version. In the Japanese version, it's synced with the Japanese version. So they're definitely like I noticed that. Yeah. I was like, ooh, they did it in English. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it, so I think they're putting way more thought into the translation this time. So hopefully, it's not doesn't drop as many R bombs as the first one did. <laughs> it's a little definitely in early nineties. <laughs> well, what is an R bomb? Uh, yeah. It's 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 just too bad to say all right it's very non-pc <laughs> um did you see this matt did you see that uh u.s senator senator josh hawley from missouri uh announced a bill that will ban loot boxes and pay to win microtransactions and games pay played by minors it hasn't been formally like uh you know introduced to the senate but he's talking about introducing it to the Senate. Did you see, did you follow I this did, at yeah, all? Yeah, yeah. Is uh, this, do you know much about this? Is uh, this? Other than this is probably just to, to get a gauge of where certain political alliances are in regards to loot boxes and microtransactions and that specifically target minors. Right. And, but, but that kind of, you know, a lot of games could fall under that umbrella. Yeah. yeah. I don't think an ESRB rating is necessarily going to change. I don't think an ESRB rating of like M is going to be think affected. So? By I was this. wondering about. Yeah, that. I, I, I think to politicians, like all video games are targeting children. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I know they specifically games. like mentioned Candy Crush or whatever, like right. in his bill. But it's like, but it's like I imagine that this would go for Call of Duty and you know Battlefront and all those sorts of games. Because I know a few weeks ago we talked about the FTC uh, doing some, you know, creating a committee or looking into that, and I don't know if this is related or not, or just a, another arm of the sort of backlash. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's interesting. We'll hear more about that when he does introduce it and where, well, Bill's, yeah. Bill's I mean, this is always time. interesting to me, um, because if you try to figure out like when a company is targeting miners for microtransactions, it's like really hard to do. It's easier to do with something like uh, regulations for marijuana in like Colorado or Washington. You mm-hmm. can't have candies that look like that could fool real a ch- candies, child into yeah. real candy. Right, so no right, right. Reese's, no Starburst or anything like that. They have to look totally different and marketed completely Gun different. Gun-shaped gummies. Yeah, gun. <laughs> yeah, no AK-47s. Uh, kids love gun candy. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I have a quick question for you guys about this. So A, do you think that it's a good idea to limit um, – microtransactions in games like legally and then b how does uh like the government getting involved in video games kind of make you feel does it make you kind of nervous because it's a little weird right? yeah now we're a politics podcast yeah 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 well personally like i'm a very progressive liberal person but i also have a little bit of a libertarian like streak of like especially it's like whoa government getting into my games <laughs> it's, uh, a little, it's a little unsettling and it's like yeah. well, what are they gonna do next uh i don't know so that is a little bit nervous uh or makes me a little bit you know nervous but at the same time, I do think loot boxes are pretty terrible, especially like ones in games that target kids. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you know. For sure. You have any thoughts on the matter, Eduardo? Yeah, I guess from a developer side, I would say that I support it. Right. Like, I support the idea of regulating that kind of thing because that does prey on that addictive side of yeah. humans, right? Sure, sure. There, uh, there's a reason why gambling is regulated the way it is right. in general. Um, I don't tend to get any negative feelings with the idea of a uh, government in my video games, but mm-hmm. main, I just, I'm not paranoid of the government. <laughs> right. In general. Yeah, me either. Me either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, like I said, don't. <laughs> going into his bunker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess I don't tend to be paranoid about that kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Um, so yeah, I, I think any sort of effort, uh, you know, it's a great, it's a, it's a great thing, right? It needs mm-hmm. to be discussed, it needs to be explored, uh, but it's good that it's been introduced as yeah. a subject, you know, for sure. I agree. And Matt, do you want to tell us about this next, uh, this next one on the, on the list? The, oh yeah. The Deke, cool one. the Deke art that came oh, out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is it Deke? That's what I've been hearing. Yeah. Yeah. At I, the end of the, at the end of the episode, Zero goes, da, 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 Deke. And yeah. st- I you guess they don't want to be Dick. It's yeah, no, you can't be Dick. <laughs> it's D I C. Let's get to the story yeah. so they know what we're talking so about. So there was an estate sale for a former Deek Animation Studio employee, and he had a ton of different concept art for different games. And so Deek has done the Super Mario cartoon, the Super Mario Bros. Super, Super Show, Marvelous Super Show yeah. as well as the Captain N Nintendo 
yeah. Oh, right. cartoon. Yeah, and, and the Legend of Zelda show Zelda one, back yeah. in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all and, those like eighties Nintendo cartoons. Yeah, yeah, it's all done here. And there's some um, really cool concept art that was found, especially like there was a concept for Metroid where Samus is a man. <laughs> it's just like a dude. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. weird. <laughs> it's so weird. And there's like a monster that's not Ridley or anything we're familiar with too, right? Yeah, it wasn't like a space pirate at all. Well, if you go back to like Captain N and look at it now, it's really silly. Like a lot of the character design, like the character design for Pit and like, and like, uh, I think Simon Belmont is like, like yeah. a crazy. He's kind of like a bro. Here. Yeah, yeah, he's like a bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's like a frat bro. So they never really got it down anyway. Speaking of Simon Belmont, there's also a Castlevania concept art that was part of this too, but it's like just kids and monsters in the concept art. So I don't know, there's no, there's no Belmont or, or uh, anything. The, the one that jumped out at me was the California Games one. Yeah. I hadn't thought about California Games in 20 years or whatever it's like oh yeah i remember playing that game on the nes yeah yeah yeah. that's That's like one of those ones that because i didn't have an nes i played a lot of at people's houses because that's the kind of game you could just like here play you know we can play this because it was just hacky sack or whatever (laughs) (laughs) that game was ridiculous it's funny it's like almost like you'd you'd expect some sort of weird crossover event like a la avengers or something with that like (laughs) Like the fucking Nintendo Cinematic Universe. Well, I think that's then, like, what they were. These are all for something called that was going to be called like the Nintendo Power Hour or something. Mm-hmm. Like, so these were all going to be, I'm guessing, kind of little short cartoons. Well, I don't know. They never came to be, but the art's cool. You should check it out. It was posted on eBay. Um, if you want to go look it up, you can You can just kind of Google Deke. <laughs> like, like D-I-C. D-I-C. Like Dick with it without a K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, this was kind of a weird piece of news that I almost put on last week, but then I didn't. But then I did this week. Uh, the there's there was this scientific study done that was published in Nature Human Behavior, where and there's a an article on theverge.com if you want to read more about it that's not in a uh, academic journal, um, where they did a study on people who played Pokemon as a, as kids in particular, like the Game Boy original games. Um, And there's like a part of those people's brain which lights up when they show them pictures of Pokemon that is consistent. But when uh, people who have just played Pokemon do it, that doesn't light up in their brain. This was based on the trying to study like, you know, unique... uh, God, I'm going to do a terrible job of trying to explain what they were trying to study. I didn't understand the article when I read it. So, uh, <laughs> but the, the idea was about like where we store information in our in our brains and that kind of stuff. It's just kind of interesting, and it's just funny that they chose Pokemon to be. Uh, but I guess that the, I was reading about it and the, the the authors of the study was like, I was trying to find a way to study this, and then it just like hit me that like Pokemon is a perfect thing that like a lot of people were exposed to like quite a bit at a certain age Mm -hmm. right in their face that I can use instead of like torturing children by subjecting them to things and then testing them later. Yeah, you know sure, what I mean? sure, sure. So it's just kind of cool. You can check that out if you're interested. I asked in a uh, neuroscientist friend of mine to uh-huh. translate what this means for us uh, oh. peons. Um, Give us the... <laughs> yeah, he, he I'm going to quote uh, Matt James Davis. Uh, he said, basically, Pokemon kids have a special region that respond mostly to Pokemon and not other stimuli. So because it's on... The pixels are a certain shape on a certain sized screen on mm. a certain color that you're staring at it for such an extended amount of time. And it's such a unique shapes and unique creatures that the brain stores that as as like its own section. Right. It doesn't it, fall under animals or something. So that was one of the things. Exactly. That was re- like, yeah. so, you, so what you're telling me is that when you view Pokemon, it stimulates the Pokemon receptors in your brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's exactly. so, so it's not a face and it's not a place. It's like this unique visual category. That's, that's fucking part weird. of your brain. It, it kind of sounds like brainwashing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah this is like, what my dad like, was warning me about. Yeah. Like the Japanese government was doing something to these kids. Uh, that is totally unique in the world. <laughs> that's funny it's funny that i mean it, this is kind of I, I always find it interesting when like straight up like scientific uh studies are done using video games like there's been a lot done with tetris as well just basically like using tetris as a gauge for like separating your brain from motor function right and like having like two processes going on at once so it's just kind of interesting like seeing this kind of stuff come up in in the scientific world 
Um, so uh, don't ever let your parents tell you that uh, <laughs> gaming is for nothing. <laughs> well, we're talking about science. Uh, the YouTuber Papa Gino. Dude, you are the master <laughs> of the segue. Papa <laughs> Gino. Uh, he, um, he's got a YouTube channel and he's really focused on Smash DLC characters lately. And he's got a Discord. And apparently in his Discord, him and a bunch of uh, the people on his Discord all figured out that doing Google searches in Europe uh, for Smash DLC and then putting in specific names uh, after clearing their cache and logging in anonymously mm-hmm. and all this stuff could get a result of the ad for, and correct me if I'm wrong here or interject, but this sure. is it's sort of roughly, honestly, if you really want to know the details of this, go watch his video. It's really complicated. Um, yeah. But essentially they could get a Google result in a search of an, of the ad for the Smash DLC when putting in certain keywords of like DLC Smash and then only five specific characters and the theory they're calling it Google theory the theory is that there somebody in Europe for the DLC Smash ad on Google left in or put in too early the keywords for the next four DLC fighters right right right, right. and they've tried it and and it's not it, it's not when you search DLC it's when you just search the character name and then Smash, Smash. Brothers Ultimate gotcha. right and so it's like and so they've done it with like a bunch of other characters that they thought would be DLC and it's like it and none of them doesn't turn up the result yeah it so it, it doesn't seem like it's because of people speculating about certain things and these search results are the sponsored ads and not the right. like normal listings right 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 and again you can like there's SEO stuff going on here that I don't understand entirely, but apparently I've, people that know more about that than me have chimed in and it's like, well, this is either real or weird or somebody's created fake ads or something. And, yeah. and also there's also the entire possibility that it's just wrong. Right. Like I don't right, know what right, that, right. <laughs> but what, 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 what are the five characters? Yeah. So, um, I, it's Joker, obviously, I guess that was sort of their test case. Banjo Kazooie, Ryu Hayabusa, and that's from Ninja, Ni- Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Doom Slayer from Doom, and I don't know that I've not played Dark Souls, and so I think you say it Ar- Artorius. Is yeah, that right? Artorius. He was like he was like the DLC character from Dark Souls. A character yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in Dark Souls. He, he was a villain, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I think yeah, the yeah. DLC was like you can the play Trials of Artorias or something. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, the main villain in, yeah, in the yeah. DLC. So yeah, so that's the weirdest one. That, and that's what actually is kind of the coolest one too because it's so left field, if it's true. Um, What's funny to me is that the majority of these characters are from M-rated games. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> like, With Banjo being the outlier there. Um, it, so, I don't know, I We'll see. Obviously, I think there's a good chance we'll hear about uh, the next DLC at E3 or sometime between now and then, because if Nintendo can do whatever they want, but it would be about two and a half months if they if they stagger the releases of these characters perfectly. It would be about July 1st, give or take, that we, yeah. would, that we would get the next character. So that will either, you know, let us know. Who's which of these leaks and rumors and theories we've yeah. been hearing is is right or wrong? I'd have to imagine at E3 they're going to be announcing the next fighter, and if he's one of the four remaining people on this list, then that's a pretty good sign. Yeah. But I'm also getting just major Grinch leak flashbacks from this. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, were you, totally. Were you familiar fake. with the Grinch leak? Uh, no, is super realistic Smash leak that like everybody bought, and then it was a huge fake. And it was like <laughs> the Smash leaking community is insane. We should do a whole episode on that. And it was the, the, the Grinch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they they call it the Grinch leak because like it was supposedly linked from leaked from this French like designer who was also working on promo art for the Benedict Cumberbatch Grinch movie. And it was like a, it was like an unused render of the Grinch. And they were like, "Oh, this has never been seen before. So it must be real." <laughs> you know, it was just like way fucking fake. <laughs> but I bought it. I thought it was real. So yeah, it's just interesting if you're if that piques your interest, go check out his videos about it because he has two videos about it now. I guess I haven't seen shout the out just one. to Papaginos in general. That dude, like, 
is such a hard worker. Like anytime anything remotely interesting about Smash comes up, he makes like a 20 minute video on it. <laughs> it's like, I just admire that right. guy's like, work. We ethic. didn't talk about this, but like he did a long video on the fact that it kind of looks like Rayman and the ice on battlefield. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so maybe that means something. I love uh, it, dude. I don't know. Uh, so uh, the English translation of the uh, Q and a from the big Nintendo investor meeting that happened recently just came out. And uh, we'd already talked about a lot of this because, you know, we'd already kind of heard some of this. But there are a couple of interesting things that people have been talking about. In particular, for me, at least, uh, I thought it was interesting. Somebody asked about the 3DS and President Furukawa uh, kind of just responded. And and he said something to the effect about how all their handheld uh, development has moved to the Switch since it's both. Yeah. And we know that because we've seen Box Boy and Box Girl and stuff like that. That's but it just kind of is another one of those nails in the 3DS <laughs> coffin when he's saying stuff like that. Rip 3DS. And then um, he was asked about the growth of Nintendo Switch Online and he uh, kind of talked about the success of Tetris 99 and kind of hinted at maybe they would do more uh, exclusive things like that. And I a lot of people took this news and ran with it, but I read that and I, my my take on it was a little more tempered, but everybody's like, oh, that means they're going to make more exclusive Nintendo Switch Online games. And maybe they will. I don't know, but uh, hopefully they do. Mm, that'd be cool. Um, but we'll see. Um, did you guys look at that translate translation? At I, all? I didn't have a chance to read it. No. Um, there wasn't too much else that was really jumping out at me there are a couple other interesting things but but we'll move on um speaking of tetris 99 especially because this is weird sort yeah. of uh tetris 99 has dlc and it's paid the, dlc yeah ten dollar <laughs> paid dlc for tetris 99 to play offline basically it's it's a ten dollar dlc and it's called big block dlc and you get the Modes, a couple of the modes that were data mined that we talked about a while ago, which is the marathon mode, which is basically just single player, regular Tetris, and a CPU battle, which is basically Tetris 99 with just bots. With bots, yeah. And yeah. then, and more later. Um, so there's going to be additional stuff, I guess. If well, you some buy of the it. other data mine stuff was like team battles. Right. Like, so we know I'm about sure that's team coming. battle. That's yeah. probably what the other, t- the yeah, other yeah. part of this package is, though. Maybe there'll be more, maybe not. Um, but it's just weird to have the like online part. I mean, I, if he had, if they had done this in reverse, people would be pissed, right? But but like, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Well, it's like it. it they're kind of doing the Fortnite model, right? Where it's like Fortnite has the battle royale mode free for everybody, and then like the base game of Fortnite, the save you the pay world. For. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like they're kind of doing that thing. It's like I think this is basically just for people that don't have Nintendo Switch Online. For the most part, or don't own a version of Tetris already on their Switch, yeah. right? So it's like, like I personally, unless they come out with some really cool stuff down the line, won't be getting this DLC because a, I don't feel like playing it offline. I'd much rather play against real people. And then the like the marathon mode or whatever, like I have Poyo Poyo Tetris, yeah. so it's like I can just play Tetris that way. So there's really no reason for me to get it. Um, something cool though. About the Mac, there's like a Maximus Cup coming up this yeah, weekend. Yeah, there's a new Maximus Cup, the third one. Yeah, and and this time, if you actually like make enough points, if you make a hundred points, which I think just means you get like second or third, like if you four get, times. if you get first, yeah, if you get second twice, it's like a hundred points, then fifty, and then twenty five, yeah, yeah. and then it's small amounts. So, so if you if you get a hundred points while doing this, you get like a Game Boy skin. Yeah, for I'm the excited game. about so that. I think that's kind of. Cool. I'm out of town <laughs> camping this weekend though, so I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna have to. Damn, dude, use a fucking mobile hotspot or something. I'm gonna shit, have dude. to like grind on Friday. <laughs> before i leave or something so it's just like a skin that looks like a game boy screen yeah, yeah it basically just makes your game look like it's the og or original tetris game, game boy Best which yeah, is yeah. my tetris yeah <laughs> my, hashtag, my hashtag not my tetris. tetris i want that skin <laughs> and i'm yeah this okay. is what the podcast is like eduardo sure, we're talking sure. about tetris 99 for 99 percent of the podcast but that's the news <laughs> yeah. that's the news for this week so Whew. there we go we got through it there's a lot of stuff there um yeah. I, want, I really want to do mario maker speculation but it, we just shouldn't yeah because everyone's gonna everyone's know, gonna know. <laughs> um and we got to move on because yeah. it's it's time. So we're going to talk about sound design in the indie scene and Eduardo uh, Ortiz Frau here with us to talk about that. Why don't you just kind of introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, how you got to be involved in, in, and also maybe you could tell us what sound design is first. Uh, sure. Because sure. I think, you know, 
<laughs> a lot of people might know what music in a game is, but maybe that term sound design doesn't mean anything to them. So maybe you tell us that and then kind of tell us about a little okay. bit about your history. Well, I guess sound design is anything that you hear in a game that isn't music or like composed, you know, music. But that even that isn't always true. Right. Because sometimes sound design and music, they're very much intertwined. And sometimes it's the same person and a game like, let's say, Limbo yeah. or Inside, you know. Uh, so, yeah. So, it's like that. that's not always kind of like a, like a black and white rule. Okay. But for the most part, it'll be anything you hear in a game that is not music. Right. And is and what is a, a sound designer? Like, do they just make the sound? Or do they Are they involved in some of the programming of 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 uh the the sound files and that kind of stuff or or is that yeah. kind of depends too well you usually the way it works i mean you might have audio programmers on a team but usually the the way it works is i am i have this relationship with the programmers right and kind of like we're working together to create the systems that support the sound design. Right. It is very hands-on in the sense of, you know, I do work with implementation software. I, I work on the engine. I am putting the sounds in game and I, and I am designing systems, like I mentioned. But mm -hmm. when it comes to programming, uh, you know, I usually work with a programmer. Okay. Mm -hmm. To get out a lot of stuff done. Cool. Hopefully that answers everybody's question about what sound design is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're done! Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Uh, but tell us a little bit about yourself and how, yeah, how'd how you get you, into yeah, it. how you came to that. All right. Well, um, let's see. I came to Austin around eight years ago. Before that, I am from Puerto Rico. That's where the accent is from. Um, so my background is all in music, even though I do sound design. Uh, you know, I went to college for classical composition. I went to college for audio engineering. I used to work in recording studios. I sure. used to play in bands. And, but I was a starving artist, you know, like the music industry is kind of like a hard industry. Um, so I left Puerto Rico kind of like searching for new avenues to employ my skills. And I came to Austin and I knew games was a thing, right? I, I was, I was not a big gamer growing up, but you know, there was like the Nintendo, mm -hmm. Super Nintendo, a uh, Game Boy. There, there was a lot of stuff in my house, but they usually, they belonged to my brother who right. was, all, who, who, who was older, which meant like those were his <laughs> things. <you Right>. know? <laughs> so they were all, I mean, they weren't like off limits, but they were not mine. But I guess, uh, yeah, I came to video games out of necessity, pretty much, the idea of making a living. But then I, I got to Austin, and I kind of, like, started getting to know the crowd here, and actually started discovering indie games, uh, mm -hmm. because I guess, you know, eight years ago, it, I don't know, to me, it was a completely new thing that I didn't know existed, mm -hmm. and it blew my mind. Uh, cause it felt super artistic. It felt super different from kind of like, it, it re like a game that I felt was similar. Like back in the day was like Shadow of the Colossus, where with that, sure. where, where that game felt very artistic to me and that game stood out to me. Yeah. Kinda that like was one my, of the it, first games I remember of being like, oh, this is kind of an art form. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah, when I'm playing that game, it's like, oh, I'm just fighting bosses. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. yeah you're, you're just riding your horse <laughs> <laughs> across this open world. Uh, so I remember that game made an impression. So it's like what I was, what I was discovering was leaving that type of impression right. again, right? So I, I fell in love. Uh, and of course, you know, there is money in video games, meaning in a way that is different from movies and uh, music in terms of an, at an independent level. Right. Uh, you know, I can make a living and as an independent level, like I, as an independent, I don't have to work for a big company because there is a culture of buying games where people don't really have a culture of buying music anymore. You know, right, they don't have right, a culture right. of buying movies anymore, but people buy games. That's, that's fair. And, wow. and, and I'm going to correct me if I'm wrong, but you've yeah. been a freelancer this entire time. Right? Yes. I've always been a freelancer and never worked for a company. Do you, yeah. Can you see yourself ever like joining a team like that and working yeah, with a group? I, I think, w um, I guess now like, when I'm, where I'm a bit more mature in my career, I right. think the main draw to working for a big company would be having a team, right. like, like having a team of sound designers and because of the idea that I, I get to achieve more. If sure. I have a team of really talented people, uh, if I have people that are just better than me, mm -hmm. right, that I can learn from. Because usually as, a, as an indie, I'm always alone in, in terms of my craft, right? I'm, I am the sound designer. And while I tend to collaborate with all these people in these different um, 
disciplines, I don't tend to collaborate with other sound designers. So, mm -hmm. I, so, so it's like what I learn, I learn on my own. Right, so because right. of that, I guess idea, um, yeah, I, 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 I would be open to it. Mm -hmm. But I, at the same time, I really love being a freelancer. So Yeah, we'll you see. get to do weird shit. Like one of the <laughs> first times that we really hung out for like an extended period of time was when you were working on that game jam game lovesick yes, uh, yes. <laughs> that, uh, and, and just so i could explain it to people this game was fucking so silly it was for yeah. it's for a game jam where the theme was vomit right yeah and shrimp a yes. and shrimp <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I forgot yeah. about that so it's like and what was the, was that fantastic arcade or it was fantastic arcade it was a two-week jam it's the, it's the only jam i've ever done really right, right and right. it's the only game that i've acted as more than a sound designer i was like part of i was you know i designed a, lo a big part of the experience right, uh, right. And, wh and what was the guy's name that you were working with on this game? jay pierce that's right he worked yes. on like hearthstone and stuff right yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yes yes he did yeah, yeah. Uh, well this game just so you guys know what we're talking about it's called lovesick and it's it's it i I played a groom and my friend Christina Parrish played a bride and it was like the night of our wedding and we were in the hotel room and we both had like bad shrimp during the wedding reception. <laughs> so like basically the way the game would work is there was like a toilet in the middle of the, in the middle of the room and then like all took place in the bathroom of this hotel, I guess. Yeah. yeah and yeah, then it was yeah. like, you're both continuously puking uh, unless you press like the main action button, which makes you shit. <laughs> And yeah, then, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, uh, and, but if you, if you're vomiting, your head is getting thrown back. And if you're shitting, you're like, abdomen and like lower part is getting pushed forward yeah. so it's like you have to kind of like weirdly control where it's all your projectiles game. are going yeah, yeah. yeah it's like a physics game and you had to yeah. get as much projectiles into the toilet as yeah. possible and, and i had the, so much yeah. fun doing that game. yeah like one of the parts i loved was the fact that there was a voiceover right. because like the idea was if you know if you're vomiting you're you're not talking but as soon as you you were like pooping then you like the characters would talk to each other because these are you know they're in love they're, they're this is their wedding night they're trying to comfort each yeah. other and christina kept being yeah. like oh, she's like she's like oh this is gonna be funny later yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i was like i'm pooping yeah. i'm pooping but uh, I, I love that that was part of the game yeah, yeah. it added this narrative element to yeah. it yeah it's like that's the kind of shit that you don't get to do if you work for like a triple a studio <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah i agree yeah <laughs> Yeah. Well, I was kind of curious if you could tell us about sort of your process and, and, and I'm sure it's different for different games, but like at what point, you know, you get brought into a game and, you know, do you, do you see game footage and then do the sound design based on that? Or is it more uh, iterative than that? Sure. Or, or I, I was wondering also, like, I guess I didn't say a lot about myself, but should I talk about the, th the things I've worked on? Just yeah, to let's, yeah, sure. let's some, do that some first. context yeah. Yeah, yeah, of who yeah. I am. Yeah, well, let's, yeah. let's about drop that. some names. Yeah. 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 I mean, no, it's like, okay, so I guess the most famous games were Stanley Parable, which was actually my first commercial game. So ah, that game. helped a lot uh, in my career. Worked with Davey Redden on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I guess after that, the most famous ones were um, Everything, Goro Goa, which we're, I guess we'll talk about more, sure. and, yeah. and Edith Finch, like what remains of Edith Finch. Oh, those, right. I forgot you did that game. Yeah, yeah. And all those games came out like in a pretty close window. So that was like a crazy year. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Just it's a, funny, a bit all, of background. All no, of those so games, cool. it's funny that you say that you were really inspired by Shadow of the Colossus because those are all very like artistic games. Yes. Uh, I mean, my inspirations, my like some of my main inspirations when I was falling in love with the idea of indie games and indie games uh, were uh, it, Dear Esther was a game that sure. blew my mind. Yeah. And Journey, of course, but everybody loves Journey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kentucky Road Zero was yeah. another one. So it's like, yeah, it was that type of game that just like, I just didn't know that like that very was Very atmospheric thing. games. Yes. The sound plays a huge part yes, in it. Yes, yeah. so it's all about atmosphere. It's all about mood, introspection, that kind of thing, you know. And obviously, Child of the Colossus was super moody and super right. introspective, and the story was super vague. Mm -hmm. And I, that 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 adds to kind of like you projecting your own ideas into the game and, and making it. I don't know. It felt it felt very personal, etc. Mm -hmm. So when you when you get hired on to one of these games, is it is it very often early on in the process, or do they? You know, I'm kind of curious. Just like. Mm -hmm. Do you get to see a lot of the game first, or is it more like we're looking for this kind of a feel? Or it tends to be maybe halfway, if mm -hmm. not towards the end. I'd rather be, you know, come in halfway because that that means that there's actual time to develop the sound of the right. game, right? Because you know, sound just as anything else, it, it needs to be developed, uh, and that that is sometimes a struggle because 
in general, people don't really understand sound. Uh, like developers don't really understand sound. <laughs> right. They don't really understand what it takes. So you know, like if make... somebody gave you a game pretty far along, it would be harder because... Yeah, it would be... It's, it's, it's just about time, right? Just yeah. as, you know, uh, polishing game mechanics takes, takes time, polishing code takes time, polishing art takes time, polishing sound takes time. Gotcha. And it's just, yeah, it's just understanding that idea. Mm. Well, um, to, uh, just to talk about some of the games that you actually have on Switch, like mm. Gorodoa, for instance, um, A, that's a very beautiful game, yes. just in and of itself, and very unique. Very right? unique. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's kind of like, a if you aren't familiar with the game, it's kind of a puzzle game where um, on the screen there are always these kind of four quadrants, and then there are these different almost kind of living photographs that mm -hmm. uh, will po kind of populate in different areas. And you can drag bits of them and make them interact with each other, zoom in and out and stuff like that. And with a game like that, like sound is such a huge part of like completing the puzzles, right? Cause it's like, like there will be little audio cues. Yeah. Like when the, well, I don't want to spoil anything. Well, but like, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, but like, it's yeah. like, it's like, it's very easy to get lost in that game. Right. Cause sure, it's like, sure. yeah, cause there's yeah, yeah. so many different possibilities of combinations. It's almost kind of like, it reminds me almost of like doing one of those puzzles, like those picture puzzles where you have to move around the panels. You and know what I mean? Almost like a game like mist or something too. Right. Like where you, nothing is explained. It's very yeah. weird. Yeah. And you're just kind of like experimenting. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, my son who is four and a half, loves that game <laughs> great, we, great, great, great we beat it together uh and he was obsessed really and he was like throwing out theories about what's going wow, on because awesome. wow. like i don't know it's a, again no spoilers but it, it's a very strange it reminds me has, of an acid it's, trip it's very like. abstract <laughs> yeah. in terms of both the sound and the sort of the like story i guess yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean um, there there is a story which yeah. I, i'm not gonna spoil right. uh, but yeah i mean there's a there's some there's a story going on it's, it's a very symbolical story yeah. like you know there is a story about ideas uh and but I, there is a story you know, and i love uh, the way the sound plays into that not just the like sound effects but just that story. it's that abstract not it's not like it's scary but like kind of w creepy almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's not a straightforward soundtrack, and the soundtrack was uh, made by Joel Corelitz. So right. I did the sound design, and he did the soundtrack. Just you know. yeah. But but it's like it, it, it's it's interesting though how those two kind of interplay with each other because yeah. it's like because you'll have a lot of the musical cues that are also tied with actions that you do mm -hmm. in the game. So mm -hmm. it's like. Mm -hmm. When it's coming to that and you're like implementing like both sound effects and, and musical stuff, is that something that you have a hand in or is that more something that they're bringing I'm trying. I'm it? trying to remember like for that one, if I implemented the sound, I think right. I didn't. Uh, but usually, like, like usually I'm the one who is also implementing sound right, right, right. Uh, or, or music, right? Because musicians or composers tend to be a bit less uh, hands on. Mm -hmm. They're like, they'll compose stuff and where uh, sound designers, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess the culture. I don't know what it is, but the point is, yeah, we tend to be a bit more hands-on. And in right. the game I'm working on right now, I do all implementation when it comes to audio and music, etc. Sure. Well, yeah. let, let's talk about that. The, the, the game you're working on right now, uh, I, if I'm remembering this correctly, it's by the people who did Oxenfree. Yes. yes and yes, uh, yes. What, what, what's this uh, game all about? The game is called After Party. And just like Oc is it is similar to Oxen Free in terms of the structure, the type of game. It's a narrative focused right, game, like you know. Game uh, yeah. Sort of Oxen Free is all about a uh, dialogue. You know, it's it's all about talking, interacting with these characters and and exploring a story, right? Mm -hmm. So this game is very similar in that way. The themes are very different. The tone is very different. Uh, it's about this kind of like recent college graduates that they die and they go to hell. <laughs> and they have to outdrink Satan. Yeah, <laughs> they have to outdrink Satan oh, to wow. uh, to get out of jail, pretty much. Oh yeah, and it's it's kind of like it is kind of like a Bill and Ted's adventure, excellent adventure right, type right, of right. thing. Or but it's it's very adult theme. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's adult jokes. It's. It's it not, it's more not like, necessary for kids. Well, it's more like humorous than like Oxen Free was. Yes, it's a it's a lot more humorous. Right, uh, right. There's, yeah, it's jokes left and right. You know? yeah, yeah. But it's you know, again, it's 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 very script heavy. It's 
you know, it almost feels like a movie to, in, in many ways. You know? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, how, how is that working on a game like this, This was, which is way more like narrative focused than a lot of the stuff that you've been working on? Like, yeah. You say it feels like a movie. Like, how does that change your process when you're doing this kind of stuff? Hmm, that is interesting. How does it change? Well, because, the, okay, I guess since since there is so much uh, voiceover, uh, it like sound almost plays a role of surrounding the voiceover right. ra- rather than taking kind of like center stage because... Well, ninety percent of the game you're gonna be hearing voiceover. Right. So it's the idea of like not competing with the voiceover, kind of like reinforcing certain moments that you know, kind of like sound effects can come in and and play like a more, how do you say, kind of like foreground. Sure. Uh, but usually it's, it's about the background. It's about painting. Uh, I don't know the background of hell, right? And and it's also it's gotta be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also gonna like marrying the idea of like. Hell is is very mundane in this game. It's almost comedic uh, in that way. So it's so it's painting the idea of like, all right, it is hell. It is supposed to sound scary and demonic and all these things, but at the same time, it's supposed to remind you of the most mundane city or street or place uh, ever, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess it's yeah, it's just balancing those two ideas. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, this isn't my question. I'm stealing this one from David, yeah, but I really like this question. Uh, as somebody who you know is so focused on sound and audio, it, do you, when you play any other games or see any other movie or TV, do you ever notice audio in ways that that like bugs you or <laughs> like bad or, sound design? Yeah, or like <laughs> as, you know how some people say like once you learn something, it's like hard to enjoy it. You just notice things. Do you, yeah. When you come into stuff, do you have that perspective and and think about? You know, I I feel like for some reason, I mean, I. I don't feel like it, it ruins things for me. I think it may ruin games more than movies. <laughs> uh, but maybe it's because I do spe- like yeah. specifically games. So I feel like with games, spe- spe- you know, specifically lower budget games, that, that tends to stand out more. Yeah. And where, yeah, a lot of times I'm like, well, I wish they would have hired you. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 not not hired me, but just hired someone, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. right? Or Instead like doing just, it all themselves. Yeah, or, yeah it's yeah. you know uh, the idea of like audio getting overlooked. Yeah, I I don't love that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I think for games it does stand out to me more. For movies, maybe not as much, but it's yeah. Uh, I have a question that's not really on here, but uh, I was just kind of thinking about it when you're talking about dialogue. Because I know, like, when we wor- when we worked together before, like, uh, I don't know if you ever actually used any of the sound effects I did for like Apotheon and stuff like that. But like, like, um, whenever we were working together, you were doing a lot of the kind of direction for the uh, voice you're, actors. You're talking about uh, using your your VO for yeah, yeah, Apotheon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I use all that. Shit. Oh, you yeah, did use yeah, all yeah, of it. Hell yeah! All right, yeah, play yeah. Apotheon because my voice is in that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's on Switch, right? Is it? I don't know. Maybe not. Even maybe. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. sure. I think it, if it did come out, it was like a, like last year. But um, but um, like something that that I've also done before when I've done audio engineering stuff, and something that I really enjoy is like working with the actors. And like yeah. actually doing some directing, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like, is that something that you enjoy? Like, yeah, I love that. Uh, I mean, that comes pretty natural because mm-hmm. it's, it's just people's skills, you know. Right. I mean, it, it comes. I'm not saying everybody has people's skills, but right, uh, right. for but me, you, yeah, right. yeah. It's, it, I like it. Is is it feels like a break from just like the constant being creative, like designing stuff, like. It's it's a moment where I get to interact with other humans, <laughs> so yeah. so I love it. Yeah, it's 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 very not what I do all the time. Yeah, so it is like a nice little break to work with voice actors and direct them. I tend to be pretty opinionated, anyways, so I like directing because of that. Right, right, right. So, and yeah. usually that kind of like lines up with whatever the developer wants. Like, yeah, uh, have and... you ever had gotten like butt heads with anybody over like kind of your thoughts on direction? <laughs> Not that you needed to say any no, names. No, or no, no. I mean, yeah, that happens because just like I may be opinionated directing actors i can be opinionated direct i mean with anything in yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so but yeah, I, mean, I mean usually it's not really butting heads in any way that is conflicting right, right. Uh, it's usually i don't know um at the same the same way that people don't know a lot about audio that means that they tend to just let me do whatever i want mm-hmm. because they don't really understand it uh, yeah you know yeah yeah so yeah, so That's I guess cool. that gives me freedom, you know. Well, I would recommend that you try directing a movie sometime because <laughs> Oof, if you're good at directing voice actors, you'd probably be pretty good at that. <laughs> yeah, too. Right, yeah, yeah. Cool. It's all performance, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Hey, uh, do you have a game that you like a game or two that you're like, this has really good sound design? 
That. Yeah, well, I I mentioned earlier Limbo and Inside. Yeah, that's to me. That guy is to me the best sound designer in the What's industry. His name? his name is Martin Stig Anderson. Okay, right. Uh, I think he is from Denmark, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. I, I, I know. I from, yeah, play yeah, that yeah. is from Denmark. I actually yeah. talked to. I wanted them to hire me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was in Copenhagen. I kind of bugged uh, the main guy. Uh, to just meet with me. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. It's, those are really big shoes to fill. So <laughs> They're like, we only work with other Danes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, those those two games are amazing. There's a lot of amazing games. Those, those are the first ones that come to my mind because they are the ones probably that I admire the most. Yeah. I'm kind of curious, uh, and and also you don't have to name names or talk about which games, but like, what are the what is the arrangement for uh, how you get paid? Do you get paid a flat rate, or do you get paid revenue from a game, sure. or both? Or it, it depends. I mean, it's it's negotiating, right? Every project right. is different. Uh, every developer has different needs in terms of what they can, what can, what they can't do, etc. It depends on how much you believe in a project. Uh, what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do. Mm. So every project is different. I've only done one for one project for revenue share. Gotcha. And that was Goro Goa. So okay. that right. you know, that Goro Goa has been successful. So that played, you know, That's played great, out man. well. But that doesn't, that doesn't that doesn't happen. Right? What's that? What's they that? had a bunch of upfront money with that game too, right? It was like Annapurna. That Annapurna, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. But I mean Annapurna doesn't pay me. Right. right, right, uh, right. Kind of like it helps with development in general, but most of Like I did get an advance, but it wasn't really from Annapurna. It was right, from right, right. from the main guy, uh, Jason Roberts. Yeah, 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 that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that game, I still. Yeah, that, that game yeah. kind of fucked me up last night when I was. Playing, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. It's <laughs> trippy. Yeah, a few bits where I was really very uh, like my, I was playing it with my girlfriend, uh, or she was there as I was playing sure, it for a little sure, bit. Whenever sure, she sure, came sure. over. And uh, and I actually had to take still? I actually had to take a call at one point. Uh -huh. um, uh, my sister called me and and I I had to step outside for a second. I just kind of like kept the game running. And it was during a scene where there was like a bomb raid going on in the background. And so it was just like yeah. The, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah. And my girlfriend was like, "Hey, can I shut this off? This is really stressing." <laughs> yeah, me <out."> yeah. <laughs> uh, there was there was even there was even a moment a moment in development that we were like, "Oh, we should probably shut that loop." Up <laughs> at, like after he plays a certain amount. Well, I, uh, I don't think yeah. most people are taking calls. Right, right. That but scene, it's like but... yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I I found the sound very immersive in that game because awesome. it's such yeah. a weird experience. And my son was so obsessed with it that we just played through it. You know, yeah. plowed through it. And it's it's like you're saying it kind of fucks you up. Yeah, yeah. But like, and especially at the beginning when you don't know what you're yeah. doing yeah, or yeah. how like that you know there's no instruction so when it first yeah. started i was just like what am i doing like yeah, you know yeah. like i i don't even know the man how to manipulate this but yeah. then you kind of get in a flow and you're like in that weird flow mm -hmm. space but it's trippy mm -hmm. yeah yeah part of part of the ideas of of the sound design is to create just like this introspective world you know like the character is in a normal in a city right right But you don't really hear other humans around you. You don't really hear activity from mm -hmm. other humans. You know, you and, and when you do, they're very far away. They're very distant. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's all part of of creating this atmosphere of kind of like introspection. The idea that the character is pretty, up, you know, is is it's very much in their head. They're kind of obsessed with the idea of Gorogoa, which is mm -hmm. this entity, right? And they're kind of disconnected from the world in in that way. So so yeah, so kind of like. The sound helps reinforce that uh, be through that, right? Well, uh, Gorgo is like a very unique game. And then the other kind of game that we had you in here to talk about is also a very unique game. Yes. Uh, yeah, a, yeah. Maybe one of the most unique games I've yes. ever played. Yes. That's everything. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know what everything is like, it's um, it's kind of like almost not even really a game as far as like you would think sure, of as, as like sure. normal games sure, sure, sure. it's more like a, a game where you can i think that the kind of point of the game is it purports to like where you can be anything that you want basically it's almost kind of like katamari damasi-esque in that way where it's like there's all this kind of random stuff you about scale the up or scale down yeah 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 you mm -hmm. can be like a blade of grass or you can be a galaxy or you yeah. can be a you dog can be or a or particle or, yeah or yeah. a refrigerator or sub atomic yeah. particle yeah so stuff like that it's like i imagine the process for that was way different than a lot of the other games you've worked on yeah uh, i mean 
Was so, it hard? I mean, it seems oh, like that's was, a ton was, of fucking work. It was really work. hard. Yeah. It, it, that was probably the hardest game I've ever worked on. And mainly because of the amount of work right. that there, there, there needed to be. Like, I remember quoting, uh, when, when I first entered the game, I thought it would be like three months of work and it ended up being like almost 15 months. Oh my God. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was a crazy amount of work that I was just not expecting at all. And of course the devs were, they have no clue what sound takes, right? <laughs> so oh, they're just, just like, gonna, oh, can sure. you just give me a sound file of yeah. everything in the universe? Everything. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's probably my favorite game uh, mm. that I've ever worked on. Cool. It's a very special game to me. Like, it's got to feel fulfilling whenever that's all yes. completed. Yeah. And I mean, and I, I, I don't see it as completed. I, I really can't play it that long because I tend to focus on everything I couldn't do. Right, <laughs> sure. So it's not that I love playing it, but I love it nonetheless. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's definitely an interesting one. If you're, if you're looking for some unique games, like both Gorogoa and everything are yeah. some of the weirdest, most unique games I remember you can play the, the first time that I saw everything. Yeah. Um, it just like grabbed me. It was, I was so intrigued by the gameplay and the mechanics and the fact that I could be or play yeah. as anything. You're like, why and are the, these horses yeah. somersaulting? And like, then yeah. I read, you know, <laughs> uh, are you guys familiar with Alan Watts, right? Who, yes. who yes. does, yeah. who does the narration? The voiceover. Yeah, <laughs> that, you know, that is like, that is what kind of like tied everything together because the Alan, philosophy of it. Yeah. Because I, you know, that voiceover. And, and I guess for those who don't know, Alan Watts is like a philosopher, like a 20th century philosopher. Uh, he, he talked about kind of like Zen uh, yeah. philosophy. But um, yeah, that came later in development. Kind of like David O'Reilly had that idea for a long time and he had been negotiating with um, his son right. that you know, has the estate uh, to get all those recordings because uh, he recorded lectures, right? Mm-hmm. So we, you know, we had the game almost done and, and without knowing that this was going to be in the game. And then they finally got to a deal and then wow. it, 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 it became part of the game. Mm-hmm. And it was like, yeah, this needed to be in the game. This is what makes the game. It's like the connective uh, tissue for yes, everything. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I had to edit and clean that up for like a couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> I imagine. It was, and that was a lot. And that was another. Like I was very involved in the editing process, not not just like cleaning up and like technical editing, but the actual kind of like what lines are going like to be the in content. Pass yeah, yeah, it. the content, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so that was another. I guess it's a big reason why I would be so invested because mm-hmm. it was more than just sound design, uh, right? It's content editing. Yeah, you felt like you had like your fingerprint yes. like on that yeah. game yeah, yeah, at yeah. the end of it, and and. You know, those weeks that while well, I was editing all that, that was some of the best weeks of my life. Oh, yeah. Just like my job was to listen to Alan Watts. All <laughs> yeah, day. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just like yeah. changed your world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it actually did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, um, we're kind of running a little bit out of time, but uh, I did want to ask, like, if you had, um, unless you guys have any other questions, but, but um, what would your, like, if you had to think of, like, your dream project, like something that you would love to work on, like, what, and I know it's kind of a big question, but like, if you had to, if you had to kind of like put, you know, all your, if you could only work on like one project again for the rest of your life, like, like what is like kind of your ideal, like audio project? The thing is, you know, I think there is a, that's hard to answer because the answer for me is something that surprises me. Mm-hmm. So therefore I cannot describe you sure. what yeah, surprises yeah. me, like a game, like everything, a game like go to go, like these are games that. I, I become passionate about them because they're showing me something I, that I was not expecting, mm-hmm. right? And they're teaching me something. So, yeah, I have no idea <laughs> what game in the future will be able to do that again. Um, so, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but hopefully I do work on games that surprise me and, and yeah. blow my mind, you know? Well, if you keep going at this pace, it'll yeah. probably... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you yeah. you mentioned a few people already of uh, persons that you would like to work with. Sure, sure. Um, any other... But if not like a game or a franchise, maybe uh, like a a company or uh, a designer that you would like to work with. Hmm. And bear in mind, they're probably listening. To <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, because like I have, I have been able to work with some of kind of like the people that I admired. Uh, one of them, I worked briefly with Al- Austin Wintry, which, you know, right. he did the music for Journey. And, right. and, you know, I have a Journey tattoo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so that was one of the games that I really loved when I discovered games. But 
my one of my other heroes is Jessica Curry, okay. who who did the music for Dear Esther. So right, I right, like right. usually the people I tend to want to work with are composers because mm. the, that's the most collaborative relationship. Right. Sound marry the yeah, sound design. designer and composer. So yeah, Jessica Curry is kinda like a dream for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So cool. we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll hit see. her up. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then last last thing before we move on is Indicate Annex coming back. And that's that's how I met you. I think. Pro- probably not. A bunch of parties at your yes. house with a bunch of indie devs. You yeah, think it's not yeah, coming yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. has it evolved into something else, or is it, it just no? Dead? It, it I I think it's pretty dead. Oh I, no! Yeah, <laughs> I guess yeah. So we used to throw these parties at my house. It, they were indie games. Like we would showcase indie games all over my yard and 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 kind of like. I don't know, my living room, mm-hmm. and we would throw them for big events mm-hmm. like Fantastic Arcade and South by Southwest, and they would turn into really big, awesome house <laughs> yeah. parties. Yeah, right? those were really fun. And that's how I met. No, that is how I met I think you, that's how right? We met. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I think we all grew up. Uh, we became. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. It's a, it's a bit of a call out there. No, no, no. We, well, we, like, in the sense of, like, I don't know, I guess now uh, opening up my house. Right. So, it gets, so it gets trashed one more time. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. Uh, it's, all right, well, I'll throw it at my apartment. You just <laughs> have to yeah, 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 yeah. We right. can do that. We could fit like seven people in my apartment. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hell yeah. Uh, very good. Cool. Well, thank you very much for, yeah, sure. uh, for, for the interview. That was very enlightening. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah awesome. of course. Awesome. Uh, I guess we want to move on. Yeah, let's talk about what we've been playing. I'll, I'll, real quickly, I haven't been playing anything really new this week, and I've been really busy, so I don't really have much to add here. Just been playing a couple of the same games I've been talking about in the last few weeks. Um, so, um, anybody else? What, Very cool. What, what, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. You're, like, oh, right. you're not playing games. I just a little, <laughs> little, little bit of snark meter there, my bad. Uh, uh, I'll go next. Uh, yeah, I've been playing. I've been playing a lot more. Just all this Mario Maker Two news has got me even more hyped up. I've been playing a shit ton of Mario Maker on the Wii U, uh, and man, I forgot how much that game pisses me off. <laughs> I've been watching some streams. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. yeah, well, because there's not really quite, and hopefully this is something that they can kind of balance a little bit better in the sequel. But it's like whenever you're doing the hundred Mario challenge or whatever, where it gives you a hundred lives and you have to be, you have to be really good. Well, well, it's like, cause if you play normal, I always beat that with a hundred lives left. It's just like super easy. Too easy. And then the next difficulty up, I like, barely ever beat it you know it's because there will be one or two levels that just really tie me up and they're really frustrating and i have to kind of skip through them but i'm really hoping with the sequel that a bunch more newbies come in and it's like or it's more experimental again create a like a better flagging system or something or yeah, or, so, or some, something like some way that. to curate some I, I, I think it, i think it would make because the, the way that they do it is they'll basically have it by they, they, they base difficulty on clear rate Right. You know, like the percentage of people that have actually beaten the level. Right. So it's like, if I'd it's, love one that's kind of in between normal and expert, you know, for when you want to relax and play the game, but not feel like, not just play a bunch of musical right. don't move stages or whatever. Right. And then, um, other than that, um, not too much. Uh, I, uh, have, I did boot up, uh, recently with some friends. Um, I didn't get to play it too much, but I want to dive back into it. Uh, Unruly Heroes, which oh, was, uh, man. that was a game that was kind of in one of the past, like, little Nindy directs that they did. And, um, it's by a bunch of ex, uh, Rayman Legends developers, and they kind of started their own studio. They use very similar, like, kind of hand drawn animation style, like, kind of that 2D style. I don't think it's done in the same engine, but it definitely feels like Rayman Legends. And, um, and that's really fun. It's like based on the Journey to the West, like, the old Chinese story. And it's like, um, it's four player co op. It almost reminds me, you guys ever played Trine? No, but I've been, yeah, yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. it. Where it's like, where it's like each character has their own ability and you kind of have to swap between them if you're playing single player. But if you're playing like three, three or four player co-op, everybody kind of has their own little job in order to beat it. And that game was really fun. I had a good time with that. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping back into that. I still haven't beaten Hellblade, but that's, that's, that's next for me. Um, and then obviously other than that, I've been playing Gorogo and some everything. Uh, just kind of prep for this interview, but um, yeah, and both of those games are really great. I really recommend picking both of those up. Um, what about you, Matt? Uh, I've been playing a lot of Smash lately. Great. Um, nice. The my favorite parts of online gaming are there's like in Smash, there's no way to like quickly text people or chat people, right. and so the universal acknowledgement 
of like, hey, let's just acknowledge that we're both human beings is like ducking. Yeah. Or, or in Halo, it's like humping. <laughs> right, right. It's right. like teabagging. teabagging. Is yeah, that yeah. what that means? Yeah. 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 Are you acknowledging that we're human beings? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know why That's someone only, does it. It's like, it's like Morse code. I feel yeah. like people yeah. do that when they're beating my ass. Well, <laughs> which is true. But what you have to do is if they're teabagging towards you, then you also teabag back. <laughs> To like uh, to insinuate, yes, I hear you. Yes, I recognize it's you. It's a very adult way of communication. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I played uh, Smash. This has never happened um, for this extended amount of time. I was playing against this one guy for like forty-five to sixty minutes, just like rematching, just over rematching and over. every si- over and over and over and again. But were you evenly matched? Or? Uh, no, I won every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is something that I respected that he like kept on wanting to win. So yeah, his, yeah. his like. Uh, his ranking started out, it was like 2,300. Or no, uh, I'm sorry. It's like 2 million or whatever yeah, the yeah. current ranking is. And it got all the way down to 600,000. <laughs> yeah. Like after that ma- length of time. But like 25 minutes in, he just like stands there and like humps. Like <laughs> ducks. And I duck. And he starts ducking. And then I start ducking. <laughs> and then that happens. It, it like continues for the next 45 seconds. And then he like does a fireball and that means initiate combat again. <laughs> right 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 and it's, there's just these moments in gaming where it's like such rare treats sure it was like a really nice and sweet moment yeah it's it nice, nice to have it a little cool. bit of human interaction yeah. every once yeah. in a while <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Eduardo? You been playing any games recently? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> just just I, making sounds. Yeah, I guess you know when I'm playing and working on games eight hours a day. Uh, the last I, thing I, you I, yeah, do is play I, I do play board games a lot because I love games and I love systems and I love exploring that kind of thing. But what, what, what kind of board games have you been playing recently? Well, I was I've been playing this game called King Domino. And I guess it's like a tile laying game. It's pretty, it's pretty simple, but, um, I don't know. There's something really peaceful about it. Mm-hmm. I got it recently. So I've been playing that. So yeah, cool. I, I just love, I guess, a human interaction oh, and, and the analog yeah, yeah. aspect yeah. of and it. And then, right? uh, yeah. so you've been playing after party, I guess, as well. Like, yes. After, and then that's, well, you think yeah. that's going to be a good game? You enjoying yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. I mean, you know, yes, I, I play it while I work. Right. right. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty awesome game. Cool. I, I recommend it. Yeah. It's going to be really funny. It's really well written. Um, and it, it, for this type of game that makes, you know, a, a game that is focused on writing, right? Uh, it makes it. A, a big, a good game, right? Yeah, for, of, yeah. like Oxenfree, like definitely the star I felt of Oxenfree was the dialogue. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And kind of the yeah. way that they yeah, talk yeah, to yeah, each yeah. other. So, yeah. yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that one. It's oh, gonna yeah. be cool. Very good. Good talk, everybody. Good episode. Awesome. You guys yeah. feel good about that one? You guys, you, you guys have yeah. fun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> I love yeah. that we do this every time. <laughs> I just have to, I just want to check in. I want to make yeah. sure everybody's having a good time as part of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, oh, uh, thanks yeah. to Corduroy for giving us the sweet tune, making that music. Yeah, what's up, buddy? What's um, up, Corduroy? Yeah, uh, email us, Twitter us, Facebook us, all that stuff. Yeah, um, and check us out online and check out Eduardo too. You can find uh, me online at, at PDYX, you can find me on Twitter at M A T H Y O U Matthew. Uh, I'm everywhere on the internet at Monolith Fiji. How do we find you? Eduardo? And I guess on Twitter you can find at Ed Sound Design. Oh, do you have nice. a website yeah. or anything? I do. It's EdSoundDesign.com. <laughs> oh, <there laughs> it, it's not. gonna be Ed Sound Design everywhere. I've good, got I've got branding. a similarly universal handle. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Well, yeah. Check us out. Um, uh, again, we're always uh, every week. We're up on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. Uh, I guess iTunes is now Apple Podcasts. We've been saying iTunes this whole time, but it's it's Apple Podcasts. But if you got an iPhone, that's the best way to listen to us, probably. Uh, make sure you uh, go to uh, Apple and, and leave us a review or a comment. Um, uh, we're on Twitter at SwitchHeads, uh, Instagram and Facebook at Super SwitchHeads. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, answer some of your questions. And, hey, you know, if you're enjoying this podcast and you got a family member or a friend you think might be into it, just fucking... Shoot him a link, baby. <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it going, man. We're the premier Nintendo <laughs> podcast on the whole internet. I mean, people deserve to know about it. All right, folks. Uh, it was a very good time. Uh, join us next week when I think we'll be talking about 
What are we talking about? Are we talking about Bowsette next week? We're talking about yeah. memes. Yeah, we're talking, yeah. About, we're talking about Nintendo memes, fandom, and the whole Bowsette phenomenon next week. So 75 sure. minutes of yeah. Bowsette. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be tight. Make sure you tune in next week. We're going to be having a good time. And then uh, we'll be having some fun uh, E3 predictions coming up as well. I'm looking forward to that also. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.